Miss G, you're on. What? Oh! I'm sorry. I was just doing a bit of research. I'm sorting my trash. I suppose you're looking for some help. Um, my name is Miss G. I'm the original Lady Ga Garbage, and I'm a garbologist by trade. And, and I'm here because I think you need some help understanding your trash story. Uh, we got an awful lot of trash to get through, trash talk, you might say. And, and what I'd like to do is I want to make sure you understand what, what trash is in the first place and, and how much of it there is and well, where it actually goes. So my first question is, is simple. What is garbage? Well, I, I suppose you could say it, it's the smelly stuff or, or the broken things. But I can think of an awful lot of stuff I've thrown away that wasn't smelly or broken. And that got me thinking, what is garbage? Well, let's do a little exercise, shall we? I have two images here that might help us figure out this conundrum. Two images that maybe mean something to you, maybe they don't. Maybe both of these images could be considered garbage. Maybe you're into the color purple, I don't know. But one of these images to me, I want to keep. One of these images is important to me. So I wouldn't dare throw it away. But one of these images, yeah, I could totally just trash. So then that tells me that maybe, just maybe, garbage is anything and everything we just don't want. So that opens the door to a lot of garbage. Anything you don't want. And, and, and that can be a lot. Now, in fact, in, in Iowa, garbologists before me did a lot of research on, on amount of garbage. And they, they figured that the average Iowan, like myself, makes about five to four pounds of garbage every single day. Five to four pounds of, of stuff I don't want every single day? Well, now that doesn't seem like too terribly much because I have a cat that weighs more than that. But if you think about it, that also has to include the garbage that's made for you. The garbage that you don't even get to see, but it's because of you that it exists. For example, for, for lunch today, I doubt you're, you're going to make your own lunch today unless, unless that's part of your learning and you're actually learning how to, you know, fend for yourself. What? Anyway, that's another program. But the garbage that is made during lunch, say the lunch lady or the lunch dad or, or the lunch babysitter, well now they're going to unwrap things. You don't eat the plastic or the cardboard or the paper that your food comes in. So that's garbage. Four pounds of garbage. That's not that much. I wonder, though, if we just do a little bit of math. I have a calculator right here. I take it wherever I go. Do you like my dress? I'm trying to start a new fashion trend. You see, pockets are handy. Pockets are great. But you can store an awful lot of stuff in a can. Anyway, so I live in a family of four. So if we do just a tad bit of math, four times four, well, that equals 16. Hopefully you got there before I did. So my family makes 16 pounds of garbage every single day, more or less. I'm going to go with more because we also have a dog. How many days a week are there? Seven. So 16 pounds of garbage times seven. Wow. My family makes 112 pounds of garbage every week. Well, now we could make that even bigger because I bet you you don't live all by yourself. Maybe your house is on a block with lots of other houses, or maybe you live in an apartment with lots of other apartments, or maybe you're sitting in a classroom right now surrounded by other classrooms. Well, I bet you that's a lot of garbage too. 
So if you pause, just for a moment, do some math for where you are right now. Whether it's all the classrooms in your school, all the houses on your block, or maybe, just maybe, you can figure out how many people live in your town. I'm going to do some serious math for just a moment while you have me paused. I'm going to figure out how much garbage we make in the county. Oh, I don't have to actually pause. That's your job. Okay. Have you unpaused me yet? Okay. So in Story County, last year they counted all the heads. And last year they decided there's about 97,100 people hanging out in the best county ever. That's 9,000, nope, 97,100 garbage makers. And then if we times that by what? Four. I gotta write it down, it's the big number. to away. I mean, sometimes you ask your brother to go there. But I'm pretty sure our garbage goes somewhere. Now, this is where it gets really exciting, because if you live in Story County, your trash story is a little different than most the rest of the state. Most of the rest of the country has a different trash story than you. So let's start from the beginning. We take something we don't want. We need to throw it but you wish you know which one I grabbed, don't you? I'm not going to show you. So I'm not going to throw it in here because this is my clothes. This is not where things goes when I don't want them anymore. No, no, no. I throw them in the small trash can that I keep close by so it's convenient to put things away. Now, does it stay there forever? No. Pretty sure not, because it would fill up. And you don't want that to fill up, because then the, the stuff you don't want anymore just falls all over the place. No, you never want it to fill up. So depending on where you are right now, I happen to be in the corner of a room, and I have to take care of my own stuff. So once that starts to get full, i got to take the little can, well, and I just put it in a bigger can. That's how that works. But eventually, even the big cans fill up. So then you gotta take that can and dump it in a bigger can. Normally those cans, they hang out outside. Now we couldn't go outside, except for I'm a bit wide right now. So just trust me, there's a bigger can outside. It's got teeny tiny little wheels, it's called a dumpster. So it's gone from one can to another can to a bigger can. But it's still gotta move. So then an even bigger can with bigger wheels shows up and dumps that dumpster into the back of the garbage truck. That's this right here. Where's the garbage truck go? Well, that's where it gets really interesting. You see, it takes it to a place called the Earth. Now, the Earth R R whoop, P. The Earth stands for the Resource Recovery Plant, most unique garbage place in Iowa, it's the only one, you see. The resource recovery plant is where all of Story County's trash goes, except for a few small communities on the outside. There's a couple of you, there's a couple of you that if, if you live in, in Collins or Colo or Sheldon, you just pause the video because this part of our story is not the same. But anywhere else in Story County, your garbage goes to the RRP, the Resource Recovery Plant, and it gets dumped on the floor. Boom! And the garbage truck drives away. Then, other things. Pick up the trash, big machine, and move it, 
and dump it onto a conveyor belt. And then it goes on a magical journey on the conveyor belt. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it goes through a shredder where all the big pieces become medium pieces. And then it keeps going underneath a gigantic magnet. Now, you know what magnets do. You see magnets all over the place. Magnets stick to metal, right? So there's metal in your garbage. You know, say you had a, a luxurious meal of chicken noodle soup. And you throw it away. And now it's at the earth. So the gigantosaurus magnet comes and it pulls out all of the metal and takes it away and they recycle it for you. They, they turn it into something brand new. So all that metal that you throw away, it just, they just recycle it. Did you know not all metal is magnetic? So they take some of the metal out of your garbage and then it continues on the belt. Dinky 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 dink. And it goes through another shredder. That makes the medium stuff into small stuff. And then it keeps going dinky 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 dink. Underneath a backwards magnet. So the backwards magnet does the exact opposite of the normal magnet. So the normal magnet picks up the normal metal, and the backwards magnet picks up, well, that, that aluminum can that just fell on the floor. So even the, the metal that's not normally sticking to magnets gets pulled out, and they recycle it for you. They change it into something else. So then, it keeps going, dinky 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 dink, and this is where it gets cool. It goes under the air knife. Well, that's just a fancy word for a giant fan, I reckon. It, it gets blown into a tube. Now, not all of it. Only the light fluffy stuff. So that's the paper, the cardboard, the plastic, but there's some heavy garbage that keeps on going. Dinky 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 dink. You know your, your little sister's diaper? That's heavy. It keeps going. Dinky dinky dink. And it goes back into a garbage truck. And all of that heavy stuff gets hauled further away. But the light fluffy stuff, we need to rewind. Rewind because where does it go? Do they just poof into the air? Well, that would be littering and that would be a terrible end to the story. No, it goes across the way. The resource recovery plant sends it over to the power plant and they light it on fire. Wait, first they mix it with natural gas and then they light it on fire. And that fire, that insanely hot fire, gives us our electricity in Story County. This light, your heat, your ability to charge your cell phone, tablet, iPad, whatever it is that you're watching me on right now, that's trash working for you. But there's a problem. Not all of it works for you. Some of it keeps going. Where does it go? Don't say it. Don't. No. Don't. Do not say the D word. That's the dirty word, that D word. I know you're thinking it. I'm going to write it, but then I'm going to erase it because it's bad. Sorry. Sorry. You're right. That's bad. Dumps. Dumps. My goodness. Dumps are just gigantic piles of trash sitting on top of the surface. That's dangerous to the environment. That's dangerous to you and me. That can make us sick. No, dumps are illegal. Dumps no longer exist. What we need to discuss is a landfill. Now, the landfill that your trash goes to, believe it or not, is nowhere near your town. In fact, it leaves Story County completely. Your garbage that you make at your house and your school takes a vacay to Boone. The Boone landfill accepts all of our garbage, the, the heavy stuff that the ERP couldn't take care of, and dumps it into a gigantic hole in the ground. I have a picture of it. I went there. It was a fun field trip. So this picture is the hole in the ground where the garbage trucks dump the garbage into a hole in the ground. And then they have another cool vehicle that has really funky tires that runs the garbage over again and flattens it and shrinks it. In fact, I think they bought their own slicer dicer too. It's some kind of grinder machine to make our garbage even smaller. They're trying to pack it in so tight because at the end of the day, they cover it with dirt. And then they start all over again the very next day because do you stop making trash? I don't. 
I make garbage seven days a week. Stuff I don't want goes right in there every single day of the week. Now this story, you would think, has a happy ending. But eventually, if you keep dumping trash in a hole, if you keep putting stuff in, it fills up. That's exactly what happened in Ames, you know. Back in the day, the year was 1992. The year the Ames landfill became a land full. No more garbage could be put in the Ames landfill. They closed the door. So then they had to figure out what to do with all of that stuff we don't want anymore. And they started knocking on doors because you have to get people's permission to put a landfill in their backyard. So you have to knock on all the neighborhood doors, making sure that everybody is okay with the idea of, of having a landfill in their backyard. And you know what they discovered? Almost everybody in Ames was an NIMBY. Now you might say, Ms. G, what's a NIMBY? I believe I'm spelling it correctly. Well, a NIMBY is people just like you and me. It's somebody who when they answered their door and got asked, would you like a landfill in your backyard? They said, not in my backyard. Nope. If only one person says no, you can't put a landfill there. So Ames had a problem. We had the garbage, but we had no landfill. Thank goodness Boone is willing to take our trash, but even eventually Boone might just fill up, which is a scary thing to think about. So here's where I come in. Here's why I started doing this garbology. Is it's a simple solution, really, is it just you have to figure out how to make less trash. Now many garbologists before me came up with four ways, four simple ways to make less garbage, to send less stuff to the landfill. They're really easy to remember. They all start with the letter R, the four R's. And maybe you've heard of them. The first one, well, it's all about making things smaller. Shrinking. No. Mm. Mm. Minimize. Try again. Reduce! Reduce the amount of garbage you buy, you make. Well, duh. Reduce means make less, make smaller. Therefore, there's room in the big hole in the ground. And many of you probably already know very well how to do this. Absolutely you do. Reduce the amount of garbage you, you make, but also reduce the amount of garbage you purchase. Now you might be saying, Ms. G, I don't make it a habit of buying garbage. That's just because you're not really thinking right now. So wake up and stop buying so much trash. For example, when you go to the trash store, I mean the grocery store, it's one of my favorite places to hang out. You're trying to decide what kind of food you want, but you also need to decide what kind of garbage you want. So say you're in the mood for some cereal. This is one of my small people's favorite types of cereal. It is the light and sweetened whole grain wheat cereal covered in frosting. Now when you buy this kind of cereal, yes, you're getting a lovely bunch of cereal, but do you know how many um, pieces of garbage you're buying? It's not just the box, because hopefully by now you've realized there's something in the box other than cereal. It's the plastic bag. So when you buy cereal, you're buying cereal and two, count them, two pieces of garbage. Two things that you have to throw away. Well, what if just maybe you could get away with buying one piece of garbage? Well, that sounds better. Now, I know it's not the same cereal. We got two different brands. But if I read the small print to you once again, Lightly sweetened whole grain wheat cereal. And then I read right up here. It says lightly sweetened whole grain wheat cereal. It's the exact same thing. 
They just put all the pretty wrapping paper on the plastic bag. So I only have to buy one piece of garbage when these people have to buy two. I am reducing the amount of garbage that I am creating just by making that choice. Another thing you can do is, is what we call buying in bulk. That means buy a lot of it at one time. So when I go to buy gum, this is a great way where I can buy in bulk. A lot of times you see gum that comes in a package like this. You open up the cardboard container and you discover a beautiful silvery paper. That's garbage number two. Inside that beautiful silvery paper you have, what is it, 18 sticks of gum wrapped in their own individual piece of garbage. So to purchase this kind of gum, I have to purchase 20 pieces of trash along with my gum. But what if I instead bought my gum in this package? One piece of garbage that contains 80 pieces of gum. Buying in bulk helps me reduce very easily. But you can't just buy less. You can't just make less all the time. So another way that garbologists figured out is the, the regen. Let's try again. Redo over. Closer. Reuse. Yes. Reuse it. <laughs> Over and over again. I think I wrote that one down too. I should just start looking at my notes. Reuse the garbage. Now this is kind of a fun challenge for me and my family. In fact, I've kind of made some crazy garbologists out of my children. I don't know about you, but sometimes when you see something that's just so pretty, you don't want to throw it away. So let's revisit this luxurious chicken noodle soup can. I ate the soup out of it. It was delightful. But now I got this can. Before I throw it away, is there anything I could do with a tin can? I've got some ideas. And I bet you you could pause the video and in five seconds come up with at least three ideas of what you could use an empty tin can for. Did you pause me? Okay, I'll keep Think about how many different things you can reuse from your garbage can. Now, don't go reusing your Kleenexes. That's a bad choice. And those Band-Aids, they're a one-time use product too. But there are so many different ways that your creativity can keep the garbage out of the landfill. Reusing is so simple. Now, I know I've been talking a lot, so if you don't mind, I'm just going to pause myself and, and have a little water break because I just want you to take a moment and think about is there anything else you could do very simply to reuse and not create waste? Uh, Miss Garbage, we're waiting. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait. But I'm reusing right now. Instead of doing these kind of water bottles, I can just make sure I always have water on hand. I can refill. I can reuse. I can keep reing all day and not have to throw away. Reusing is a great way to keep things out of the landfill. So we got reducing your waste. Don't buy it in the first place. We have reusing your waste. Keep it out of the can as long as possible. Now the next one we've already mentioned a couple times and the next one is kind of the famous er, we got the recycle. But it's important to understand what recycling actually is and how it's actually done. Because when you have something like a milk carton and you throw it in a recycling can, it doesn't get transformed magically back into a milk carton. It will only be a milk carton once in its life. And then after it gets recycled, it is completely metamorphed into something drastically different. So for example, a lot of the milk cartons that get recycled in Iowa, 
Well, they get transformed into this, which probably doesn't make any sense to you because this is a tiny piece. I have a tiny piece of this product because, well, that's the only way it would fit in my can. I need you for a minute to envision this shape, very, very long, on the ground in a parking lot. Well, of course, it's a parking bumper, that thing that cars pull up to and tells their wheels when to stop. A lot of times they're made out of concrete, but in Iowa, concrete breaks every time it freezes. But recycled milk cartons, that's forever. So recycling takes it out of the can and transforms it into something else. The ERP does that very, very well. All of that light, fluffy stuff is recycled into electricity. That's just three R's. The last R is probably the least known, but one of the most important. None of this matters if we're not willing to rebuy. Rebuy? Rebuy what? Your garbage, that's what. Think about it. How many times do you go to, to get stuff from a store? For example, as you were getting ready for school this year, maybe, just maybe, you needed to buy some paper. But what kind of paper did you choose is the question. When you go to the store, you can look for symbols that give you guidance. Recycled. I just bought something that was already something else. If you're not willing to buy a recycled product, they're going to stop recycling. And if they stop recycling, well, then we're missing two of the four R's. And last I checked, 50% is not a passing grade. We need to do our best using all four R's to save our planet. And I think we can do it. It's simple, these four things. I challenge you, the next time you go to the store, to pay attention to those four things. Every day, the garbage tests you. Let me test you first. So, say you're going to the grocery store and you need jelly. You need jelly, and so you go to the jelly aisle and, you're, and, and you look at the wall of jelly. Now, first you gotta figure out what flavor you want. Do you want jam? Do you want preserves? No, we're jelly today. And I like strawberry, just so you know. So we got strawberry and strawberry. Let's pretend for a moment that the strawberry that's inside these two pieces of garbage is the exact same product. So what you're purchasing is not strawberry jam. You're purchasing the garbage you want to take home. One is plastic, light and fluffy. One is glass, ooh, careful, heavy. The one thing the ERP cannot take out for us is the heavy. If you throw glass in that can, it goes straight to boom. But maybe you're afraid of your kids breaking the glass. Or maybe you're afraid that the glass isn't going to be recycled. So you know that this will be recycled as soon as you throw it in the can. Eventually the herb will recycle it into electricity. So which one do you buy? give you a, a secret, there's no right answer. It's what's best for you. Maybe your family needs glass jars because you like bacon every day and the only place to put the bacon grease is in a glass jar. At least that's what my grandma taught me. Or maybe your family doesn't do bacon. It's not that good for you. And maybe your family likes water fights. These make excellent handheld squirts. If you can reuse, if you can repurpose, that keeps it out of the landfill. Or if you know you're gonna throw it away, throw away where it will get recycled or recycle it yourself. Remember, this whole trash story belongs to all of us. Every single one of us play a part in making sure that that landfill doesn't become a landfill. And every single one of us can make decisions to help our story. Well, I made an awful mess, and I don't want to throw any of it away. So I think I'm going to leave you here. Remember, when you go shopping, 
When you go home, when you start to eat lunch, think about what's going in the can.